Income tax, 2023-2024. Self-employed health insurance tax software example. Get ready and some coffee. Because if you try telling the IRS auditor a joke about taxes, they won't depreciate it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting with our normal starting point, our taxpayer Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man <laughs> living in Beverly Hills, 90210, single filer to start off with. We have no dependents at the beginning. We've got our W-2 income at the 100000 We then have the standard deduction, 13850 getting to the taxable income, 86150 which we can mirror in our income tax equation in Excel, 100000 13850 getting us to the 86150 The tax calculated at 14266 On page 2, we can see that of our Form 1040, 14266 all right, let's go back to page one. Scrolling down, we're looking at the adjustments to income line number 10, which pulls in from the schedule one. If we go to the schedule one, that's not the schedule one. There it is, additional income and adjustments to income. We want page number two, which will have part two, the adjustments to income. And we are now looking at the self-employed health insurance deduction. So as the name indicates, of course, that would possibly be applicable if somebody is self-employed. Most of the times we think about self-employed as someone who has a Schedule C type of business, but they could also have some other form of self-employment income, possibly with a flow-through ent entity like a partnership, for example, or possibly like an S-corporation could be applicable as well. Now, with the health insurance, this is another area that's always been a little bit confusing because if you look at the historical background of health insurance, it's typically tied to someone's place of employment. It used to be that people worked for the same place for a long period of time, uh, which was the vast majority of people. A lot of people, uh, that was their work experience. And they got a benefit from their employer by being able to purchase the health insurance from the employer which at the least usually was able to get the uh, group insurance plans, which might be cheaper than if you bought it yourself. And that's how, or one way that the, that the health insurance kind of got linked to employment. These days it becomes much more complex because you have multiple people working and families. So whose health insurance should you be taking? Jobs are being switched on and off and whatnot. And people might be doing their own stuff as well. And so the health insurance became more complex. And of course, the question comes up for sole proprietors of, well, shouldn't we get some kind of benefit as well uh, for our, for if we're self-employed with regards to, to health insurance and so on? So that means that if, if you have a Schedule C business, note there's a couple scenarios where someone might have self-employment. One would be, well, they have access to uh, a Schedule C or they have self-employment income, but they also have W-2 income, either themselves or possibly their uh, spouse, for example. In that case, you might still, even though you have self-employment income, be able to have access to health insurance through the employer, which is kind of like the default design of, of the system, right? So they're gonna say, for, in that case, then you might be able to do your health insurance through 
uh, your employer just as you would before, but you also have some self-employment uh, income. What if you don't have any W-2 income and or you don't have access through your job to health insurance because it's not provided by your employer or something like that? Well, in that case, then that's when this could apply, right? So you get the deduction on the Schedule C. So let's see what that looks like. So let's go back on over here. I'm going to say, okay, if, it, if you had a W-2 employee, if the health insurance was taking place through the place of employment, then the employer would generally you reflect the impact of the health insurance on the W-2 form. If there's any impact on line one for federal income tax purposes, they would make the adjustment as well as social security income and basically uh, Medicare income. So the compensation should be reflected by the, the W-2 constructed by the employer. But obviously, if you do it your, yourself, then we're going to have to deal with the taxes on the Schedule C, not only the federal income taxes, but the impact for the Social Security and Medicare. So that's going to complicate the situation a little. So I'm going to delete the W-2 income and let's go to a Schedule C. So let's add a Schedule C and let's put the same amount of, of general income. So we're going to go back to our 120000 and then we're going to say that the expenses for advertising are 20000 That will then give us 100000 of income that's coming through on the Schedule C. So now we have a Schedule C here. And so here's our, our income statement, the 120 minus the 20 gets us to the 100,000. And so now the question is, could I deduct the health insurance? Okay, so if you, so if you don't have access to other health insurance, you, and this would be the general question, if yourself, you're doing Schedule C for your own business, or if you're working in taxation, a common question would come up if you see self-employment income is, well, do they have access to health insurance through W-2 insurance or something like that? And uh, if not, then is it possible to get a deduction for the health insurance through the self-employed income? If they can, then you would think you would deduct it on the Schedule C, but no, we're going to be putting it over on the Schedule 1. Now, again, you might ask, why would that be the case? Why would it be on the Schedule 1? Well, notice what happens here. If I was to deduct it here on the Schedule C, it would lower this 100,000, which would pull into the first page of the Form 1040, which would be applying the federal income tax, which would basically be correct. That's what we're mainly thinking of. But it would also pull into the self-employment. So self-employment tax, which is the Social Security and Medicare. So it would, it would also have an impact on this worksheet. And so if we take it off of the Schedule C and put it somewhere else, such as the Schedule 1, then it will still lower the federal income taxes, but it will not have an impact on the Social Security calculation. So I would think that that is kind of the rationale here, right? So that, that means we have to put it off Schedule C on the Schedule 1, page number 2, and you can see... Uh, now we have we have we still have the SEP that came into place. Let's take the SEP off just to make it uh, easier. That was from a prior presentation. Let's remove that so we could focus on one thing at a time. So we've got half of the self-employment tax that is here, and that's now you might say, okay, now you have the self-employed health insurance, and so this would be something that you have to make sure doesn't kind of slip through the cracks. Uh, if you if you find someone who's self-employed or if you are self-employed uh, because it's not really on the Schedule C, it's not really a business expense. And like I say, the default position would be to take the self-employment uh, uh, through an employer if you had the capacity to do that. So anyways, the premiums uh, not entered elsewhere. So I'm just going to put 6000 there. So now we've got the self-employed uh, health insurance that's being added in, and we can go to the Form 1040. So again, you can see the Form 1040 is significantly more complex, even though we have the same kind of 100000 Why? Because now we've got the 100000 We've got then the uh, adjustments to income, which are 1365 even though I only added 6000 to the health insurance. Why is that the case? Because we have the Schedule C here duh, 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 at the 100,000 
And then that rolled in also to the self-employment tax, which was uh, the 14129 that we have to calculate, Social Security and Medicare. That's on page, that's on the 1040 page number two. So we have the income tax and this 14129, and we get half of that as a deduction, which is on the schedule one page two. So that's where this number came into play, 7,065. And then the, here's our 6,000, adding those two up, that gets us to the 1,365, uh, which is going into the form 1040. So there's our 1,365. And then we have the adjusted gross income. And then we have the standard deduction, which was the same. And then you've got this qualified income deduction form 8995, which I don't want to dive into in detail here. And that's going to give you the 58468 page number two calculating the tax, not only the federal income tax, but also the social security tax. So just another note that uh, with self-employed individuals, if they just have gig work or something like that, and they also have other job, then their bookkeeping will probably not be too detailed. And they might not have a whole lot of extra planning that would go into play, uh, such as do, can they deduct their, their health insurance because it's on the side. But when you start getting into that being their primary business, then it starts to get more complex with the tax planning strategies where you have things like uh, benefits that would normally go through an employer, as we saw before, like retirement plans, and now like health insurance kind of situations that get more into the world of planning, rather than just straight uh, income tax preparation. As a tax professional, your question is going to be, which clients do I want to be taking on? Where do I want to be focusing uh, my time? I'm always going to, you know, kind of go back to that, that idea. Now, also note, if you're in a low income uh, situation, we know that there's the uh, what you might refer to as like the Obamacare or uh, the the a credit for health insurance. We'll talk more about that in when we get to the credits. But just realize that if if you have a credit for health insurance uh, situation, then that's going to complicate how much you paid for health insurance, right? So to see how much you're going to be able to uh, deduct for the health insurance. So just note on lower income individuals that are dealing with an insurance for uh, health insurance to help pay for the premiums, that could complicate as well the calculation for how much you can be able to deduct here in an above the line deduction. Let's do a quick recap of this over here in our worksheet. Just to mirror this, we'll say our income we said was 120,000 and then we said uh, 20,000 of expenses, 100,000 pulling in to the first page of the 1040. I'm going to remove the W-2 income. So now we have the 100,000 that's pulling in here. Then we're going to also have other taxes that will be calculated. I'll let LaCert calculate it, even though I could get more detailed and estimate it. LaCert's calculating the other taxes at 14,129. So I'm going to put that here, 14,129. I'm going to say that's 14%, which seems about right, because if I was to take a look at the percentages between the employer and employee portions, that seems kind of like the, around that wheelhouse. So if I go back on over, that's calculating down here now. And then I want to go into the adjustments to income. So the adjustments to income are now pulling in this number automatically because it's half of the tax that I just calculated. So we have that pulling in, and then we also have the health insurance. So let's add a new line and call it self. Is this what it's called here? What did I call it? Yeah, let's just call it self uh, employed health insurance. Okay, I don't think I spelled that right. Did I spell that right? I doubt it. I doubt it. Idiot. Account. I'm not an idiot. Armed forces. Armed forces. Oh, I did spell that right. I spelled other stuff wrong. But it seems like that's the spell check didn't give me a thing. Okay. So whatever. It's just for internal purposes only. Anyways, it's not even a big deal. It's not even a big deal. Why are you making a big deal out of it, man? 
and so this is going to be 6,000 and then let's add this in so that's going to be the 1365 which is pulling into the first page so there's our 100,000 1365 above the line deductions gets us to the 86,936. so let's check that out do, 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 do. this is not where I want to be ba -bum. so we're at the 86,936. 13850 for the standard deduction and then I'm just going to let the software calculate this 14617 so we'll say qualified this is 14617 we'll possibly talk more about that later when we get to the schedule C and then we have the taxable income uh, at the 58468 so there's the 58468 and then page 2 calculating the tax at 8172 so here's the tax at 8172 and then we have the other taxes at the 14129 social security and medicare in this case bringing the tax to 22301 22301 so that's the general idea so uh so the idea for the health insurance would would basically be are, do they have self-employment income uh if they do do they have other income? Is it just a side job? If it's other income, then you're going to ask about their health insurance. If they have health insurance through their W-2 job, even though they have self-employment income, then you might not have any kind of deduction for the, the above the line or adjustment to income of self-employment. But if the, if the self-employment income is their main source of income, it's likely that they don't have access to other types of health insurance and therefore might be paying for health insurance as part of like their self-employment business, in which case they might get a deduction for the self-employment. And you have to kind of make sure to uh, pick that up and then know that it's not going to go on the Schedule C because of the rationale between the types of taxes that are going to be applicable to it and which are not because it's kind of like a personal expense, right? Self-employment is basically personal for your personal medical but the IRS still wants to deduct it right so but not for some taxes but for others for federal income tax but not for social security medicare therefore it's not on the schedule c but on the schedule one